I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but look how sparkly the snow is tonight. When it's just the right temperature and consistency, it'll do that. But I'm sure the camera's not doing it justice. But it's really, really cool. Now having stuff under a tarp is certainly not my first choice. <laughs> and I thought for sure by now I'd have a garage or another building to store my stuff in. Life throws you curves, things don't always go as planned. With the tarps, we get two feet of snow fall overnight. It's an inconvenience I'd rather not have to deal with, but it is what it is. I can complain about it, complain about every little thing that inconveniences my life, or I can just trade it off and find something to be grateful for. Like in this case, I can piss and whine and complain about the little inconveniences which is going to get me nowhere and make me unhappy and everyone around me unhappy or just be grateful that I have a tarp or even better yet I have a machine worth covering. That simple change makes all the difference in the world and attitude is everything. Check this out. Just out for a little trek. Nice evening. I see this movement. I thought it was a mouse, but it's a little mole. I walk right up to him. He's right here. He doesn't he doesn't care. Oh look at him. He's right here by my feet and not scared of me at all. Oh he's tunneling in, looking for food high and low. Let's see if he surfaces and jumps on my boot. Nope, near miss. He's quite the little busybody, isn't he? <laughs> Jeepers. <laughs> he can really move some snow for a little guy. He'd be handy to have around. <laughs> You never know what you're going to see out here in this winter wonderland. <laughs> I just love living up here. Here's Mr. Grundy. <laughs> hey, Mr. Grundy. Well, here's Mr. Grundy out in front of his possum hut, and I think it's time for supper. Let's see what's on the menu for tonight. Ah, this chicken bone looks tasty. I'd say it was a good choice. With his belly full, he wanders off to do his business. But while he's away, a weasel comes to call. He's known as an ermine when he's sporting his winter colors like this, and also called a stoat in other countries. But tonight, you can just call him hungry, and he's looking for a tasty morsel he can steal. Uh-oh, someone's coming. You better scram. It's not Mr. Grundy. It's a coyote, and he's also taken an interest in the possum hut. 
And another weasel, too, a darker one. Is the weasel on the menu? Periscope up. Looks like the coast is clear. Time to grab another quick bite, but he's staying on guard. It's a party of one, but not for long. Mr. Grundy's back, and as he's settling in for a nap, the weasel makes a narrow escape. Well, all rested and caffeined up, he's headed for another walkabout. Not a bad life for a possum, even if I do say so myself. <laughs> Well, hey everyone, welcome back to the cabin. Just going to answer a few quick questions before I close this video. Now you can see the competition's pretty tough at the possum hut. <laughs> now when I set that up, I put the food at the barrel and a little bit inside the barrel to attract the possum to it. Kind of had mixed emotions about that. Hi, right, Tildy. Little Tildy wants to get in the video. Frankie's right at my feet right here. I know you don't see much of the old man anymore because he's an old man. And he just does a lot of sleeping. And he's got a gimp. He's got a few problems. But you'll be seeing some more of him. He doesn't force himself into the picture like this little fool. Okay. Back to the possum hut. Now when I set that up, I was reluctant to put the food in the barrel. But I wanted to attract the possum to the hut. So... I took a chance, put the food in the barrel, it attracted the possum to the hut, but it also attracted other animals to it, which I suspected. But now that he has found it, I'm just gonna let the rest of that food get cleaned up, and then I will put out my food scraps in another spot. Because you'll already know that the barrel is there, and then the other critters can gravitate to the food pile. So that's the plan, anyway. <laughs> Now, before I get started, I want to thank the gentleman that sent me this valve stem tool. I remember him asking me for my address because he was going to send one, but I really, I get thousands of messages a week, a, a crazy amount of messages and comments, <laughs> so it's really hard for me to keep track of them. So, you know who you are. Thank you very much for sending me this. I didn't even know this stuff existed when I had my little tire issue because I've told you many, many times that I don't deal with nuts and bolts. Anything to do with that kind of stuff, I don't do. So anyway, but this will come in handy. Thank you again for your thoughtfulness. Also, um, when I posted a video last Sunday, I got a lot of comments from people. Well, a lot of warm welcomes, which is great. Thank you, everyone. People weren't expecting me to post a video for quite some time, but I did say that I was going to continue to film and continue to post, but it would be at random. I had that video, and I decided to post it on a Sunday, because most people are looking for my videos on a Sunday. Uh, there was a lot of comments where people go, oh, I hope all your treatments went well, and that you're better now, or that you're getting better, and you look so much better, and stuff like that. Well, thank you very much. Um, a lot of that is wishful thinking because I haven't even met with my oncologist yet. Haven't had any surgeries yet. Um, I know a lot of people are wondering what's going on. I've got the issue in my skull that they need to go and take that out. But I also have cancer in another spot, plate, another spot on my body. Then I've decided now that I'm not going to be going through any traditional cancer treatments as far as radiation and chemo and stuff like that. And I'm going to handle that on my own terms. And that was a long thought out decision that I made, but that's my decision. Of course, my, that could change further down the line. I don't really know. I have another MRI scheduled so they can get a roadmap up in my skull before they cut into that. So um, we'll see. We'll see how things go. But actually, i um, been staying positive, everything's good, still rocking and rolling, going through my plans and doing my thing. So all is good. And thank you, everyone, for your kind words, thoughtfulness, prayers, etc. Okay, I'm going to get to the questions. There's only a few that I want to cover. And then after this, I'm not sure when I'll post the next video. So, 
I'll continue to film, though, like I said. All right. Oh, why don't you just get some cats to take care of the mouse problem? What problem? <laughs> if you're referring to the issues with my vehicles, I'm going to continue to have issues with my vehicles, no matter where they're parked. And sometimes my vehicles are parked on my other lot, uh, two and a quarter miles away. And I'm not going to stuff a cat inside the vehicle and leave him there. Uh, and I don't want any cats here because cats are just going to prey on my birds and my squirrels that are on the ground under the feeder. Been there, done that. It's not happening again. I had a cat move into my barn before and he just kills birds at the feeder. He didn't even eat them. He was just killing them. So talk about barbaric. Huh? <laughs> Screw that. No cats here. But here at the camp, I don't have a mouse problem. Now, I can eradicate all the mice, every single mouse that goes under my camp. And this is out in nature. And mice are just going to continue to want to move in. Because it's warm under there in the wintertime. Okay? So I have the bucket under there to take care of them. People say just to close it off, close off all of the entry points and all of that. Then the mice just make more entry points. And... If I didn't have any more mice under my cabin, it would take my entertainment away because I love playing with the bucket. And people like to see it, too. So that is that. Okay. What do we got here? Ah. Why don't you just plow your road? Wouldn't it be so much easier? Okay. <laughs> Let me clarify why I don't plow the road. Um, if I made one pass up and down... It would be 3.2 miles. Okay? It's all uphill coming up here. I don't want to plow that much. I don't want to beat the shit out of my truck doing so. I'm going to piss a lot of people off because this is a main corridor for snowmobilers. Uh, but primarily, the reason why I don't plow my road is because I moved up here so I could live in the woods and not on a plowed road. This road gets plowed in the winter, other people are going to be moving up here, okay? I like to be secluded, I love the way I live, and I live this way because I love it, and I want to. If I'm going to live on a plowed road, I'll just move back to town. That answers that. Okay, one last one. Do you replant trees after you cut them for firewood? I get asked this question question a lot and uh, I can tell that people don't really understand how it works in nature okay for one thing when I'm cutting a tree down I cut standing dead for firewood so their life is over and you get more and more standing dead trees and uh, don't get me started on that or I'm cutting diseased and broken trees, or if I'm cutting something right near the camp, it's because I don't want the tree there. I need to open up to have sun coming in for gardens and solar power and stuff like that. But when I go out looking for firewood, I only cut trees that have been diseased, busted, fallen over, that kind of thing. Once I cut that tree down, I cut hardwoods, and once I cut the tree down, it doesn't kill the tree. Okay? If you cut a hardwood tree down, it's going to regrow saplings off of the stump. You know when you see trees growing in a circular pattern, there might be three, four, five, six, seven trees all growing in a circle? That's because at one time somebody cut that tree down. Then all of those saplings grew up into trees. So where one tree was taken, you might have three to six trees growing off of that old stump. It did not kill the tree by cutting the tree down. When you cut softwoods like pine, hemlock, spruce, they don't regrow off of the stump. When I'm cutting, I don't go out in the woods and cut those unless I'm planning on sawing lumber. But do I plant trees? Yes, I replant a lot of trees. If I'm working in the woods in an area that I'm going to be making a big disturbance, and there's a lot of young spruce, balsam, fir, you name it, I will transplant them someplace else so I don't ruin their life. I will put spruces where I want spruces. I've done a lot of that at my other cabin, which you've seen me do in the past. 
but cutting the trees down when they're hardwoods does not end their life. So if you take a tree that's all busted apart from ice storms or whatever, it's leaned over like this, cut it down, new life goes to that stump and it's doing the forest some good. Okay? Wanted to clean up that little misconception. So that is all I'm going to do for now. I've got some more antics coming from the possum hut. Uh, something that's going to require a heck of a lot of editing. <laughs> but I think you'll enjoy I know you'll enjoy it. So I'm going to wrap it up. That is it for now, folks. Keep the questions coming. And I don't know when my next video is going to be. If I post it during the week and you want to watch it on Sunday, just don't watch it until Sunday morning. Problem solved. <laughs> so all the best to you folks. God bless. Frank and the boss out walking in the woods, living life happy and free. Tracks in the snow everywhere they go, there's a pokey way up in that tree. A beaver built a pond where they have some fun, taking life a day at a time. Best friends until the end Frankie and the Boss Frankie and the Boss Frankie and the Boss